and welcome to day one of making a Sylvie costume because I have way too much time on my hands. For context, I am completely self-taught with sewing. I have never learned things from anyone, so um, I never know what I'm doing. But does it always turn out really well? Apparently. I don't know how. Magic. So here's some pictures of stuff that I've made in the past. I think it turned out pretty good. So therefore, I have faith that this will also turn out pretty well. So I went to Goodwill because all of you guys know, you know, that's the best place to go to buy fabric. They didn't even have any fabric though, it was terrible. But I found these shoes. Look at these shoes, aren't they cool? And I thought they really spoke to me, so these are my new Sylvie shoes. You're welcome. Who am I saying that to? I don't know. Ugh. This color scheme? I love it. It's great. I don't have any sort of a plan. I think we're gonna start with a cape because that seems pretty easy. Yeah, so I'm just gonna like sketch out what I think it would look like in all of the separate pieces and then we're going to figure that out, okay? See you in my sewing room. <laughs> Ignore this hideous fabric. I used fabric I didn't care about to whip up a prototype of the little cloak because I didn't want to use my good stuff if it looked terrible, but I think it looks pretty good. Look at me, I look like a Jedi, heck yeah. I didn't show much of the process of how I did this because I didn't know if it would work right, but I'm gonna show the process when I make the actual cape, okay? Okay, so it turns out I'm actually a huge idiot and I do not know how to estimate how much fabric I will need because if you recall, I am not using a pattern so I just have to figure this out myself. <laughs> and so I did not buy enough black fabric because I suck. I have enough green fabric for the lining of the cape so I just started with that because, you know, might as well. So I basically just measured out like four rectangles, like big old rectangles, and I cut them out. It was difficult because the table is like the same size as the rectangles I'm cutting out. Her cape is so big, oh my gosh. And then I stitched the four little rectangles into a much bigger giant rectangle. I realize I'm doing a terrible job of describing what I'm actually doing right now, but uh, my brain doesn't work that way. Everything is just up in my head and I don't know how to express it to other people, you know? And then after I had everything all sewn together, I laid it out on the table and I started working on the like um, uh, neck hole area. I didn't do the hood yet because I was hungry and tired so I cut out the neck hole and then I put it on and this is me just showing you the unfinished lining of the cape thing. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with it so far, I just, I think it's obviously going to look a lot better once I have the black on top of it and it like, you know, looks better and once it's hemmed, once it has a hood, you know, there's still a lot to do, but you know, that's good for today. So that was day one of me making my Sylvie costume. If you would like to follow along and see me make the rest of it, then you can like and follow and all that stuff. And hopefully I don't lose my mind doing this with no pattern by myself, ahaha. Okay, see you guys next time, bye. Hello and welcome back to day two of making a Sylvie costume because I have so many issues. So yesterday I realized I did not have enough black fabric because I'm terrible at estimating how much I'll need. So today I actually got to go back to Hobby Lobby and I got the correct amount, like a smart person. And so I just did the same thing that I did yesterday with the green lining fabric for the cape. I just replicated that with the black. So basically I cut out four rectangles and sewed them together into like a <laughs> poncho type shape. I don't know why that made me laugh. And then also, if you remember, I didn't do anything with the hood for the lining yesterday, so today I had to cut out the shape of the hood in the black fabric and in the green fabric. So this is me sewing all of my black rectangles together into my poncho, as I so eloquently said. And if you're wondering why I'm smiling and giggling and typing on a computer so much, it's because my friend was watching Loki, she was on episode 4, and I was just, I was just laughing and, you know watching other people be in pain. <laughs> and I didn't sew on the hood to the capes yet because I had to lay them out on the table flat so that I could sort of copy the head hole that I made in the um the lining so I could copy that onto the black. And yes, I am also using a trash can to make a circular shape to check my work. Uh, don't judge me, I don't know how to make circles, so I might as well use a trash can, right? And then after I cut out the head hole in the black fabric, then I sewed both of the hoods onto their respective cape bodies. <laughs> and then I did not actually hem anything or sew the lining into the cape yet, so it's still two different pieces, but, you know, I was gonna be done for the day. So this is me trying it on, and I will let this footage speak for itself because my brother was making me laugh a lot. What you doing there? Okay, this is layer number Squat. one. Squat. Squat. <laughs> Squat. My hood. Oh. <laughs> you kind of I disappeared. The Looks like a graduation gown with just this color. But it kind of does. Hey, <laughs> why am I getting mad at you for saying what I just said? <laughs> you okay. require assistance. No. I got this. No, I don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> ah, my freaking head. <laughs> he observes. Oh. <laughs> 
Are you terrifying the cat? No, just minorly spooky. And I look posture. like a freaking Slytherin right now. I'm you look, not. You look very dark Death Eater man person. I look like a man? So imagine this like actually sewn together with the lining in there and not all, you know, wild. Am I doing a good job? I am rectangle, fear me. I am larger <laughs> rectangle. You are not as rectangular as me. I have no width. Oh, that looks weird. Oh! <laughs> what just... Walk away. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I was gonna lean on you and you just like, yoted away. Hey guys, welcome back to days three and four of making a Sylvie costume. I combined those two days because I felt like there wasn't enough to show for one day, so I just put them together. Don't question it, it's fine, okay? So on day three, the first thing I noticed was that my cat just like took a nap on top of my cloak and just got his orange fur just all over it. So I had to lint roll that to get that all off. That's really great. What do you have to say for yourself? And then the green lining of Sylvie's cloak is actually shorter than the black outer side of her cloak, so I just cut about six inches off of the bottom of the entire lining of the green. And then, this is why it took so long and I split it into two days, I hemmed the entire, like all of the sides of the lining of the green. So I just folded it over once and I pinned it, then I folded it over a second time and I pinned it just so there's no like raw edges showing and it looks all nice and professional, you know, all that stuff. And then I basically did the same like hemming strategy with the black, but I folded it over once and then I folded it over the second time over top of the green so that, you know, I'm like sewing the green lining in place, but then also there's no raw edges, there's no like, well it's not seamless because there's a seam right there, but like, you know, it just looks nice that way. I hope you get what I'm saying because I don't know how to speak technically. I taught myself how to sew. I don't know what I'm talking about. So I only did the hood that night because it was getting kind of late, but look at how good that looks. I've never done a lining before in my life, but I think I did a pretty good job, so props to me, woo! And then the next morning I worked on the rest of the lining, sewing it into the actual cloak itself. So first I had to like make sure it was lying flat against the black and it wasn't like bunched up or it wasn't, you know, crooked or incorrect. And then I just did the same exact thing that I did for the hood, where I folded the black over once, then folded over a second time over top of the green, just to tack that in place. Not tack that in place, sew that in place. What? You know what I'm talking about, do you? I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about. And I just did that to all sides of the cloak, and then I just did a couple little detail edits off camera and now I'm gonna show you how it looks because honestly the cloak is basically done and I think it looks really good I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out so yay enjoy this I look like a mess and I'm also having a decent amount of anxiety about absolutely nothing and that feels great but I just got to show you this because it looks good I, just, I don't know I just I'm pretty happy with how this is coming out like do you ever just look at a project you're making and just go how did I even make that? I have no memory of how this even came into existence. It's just there. Because that's happening to me. <laughs> no, hold on, hold on. Let me fix the vibes. This is closer to the vibes. Me just putting on black clothes. <laughs> Look at that hood. I feel so cool, guys. I'm sorry the lighting is so bad. I'm just in my bedroom. One of my light bulbs is out. It's terrible. Yeah, this is basically done. I just have to put some little, like, grommets that she has on the lining of her uh, cloak and I think she has like a little fastener, but worrying about that later. So yeah, the cape is basically done and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, don't know what I'm gonna work on next, but I guess we'll figure that out later. So see you later. Hello and welcome to day five of making a Sylvie costume. Today was pretty low key, uh -huh -huh. I'm sorry. I started with a random pair of black gloves that I just kind of found in my house. I started by just chopping off all of the fingers to make them fingerless gloves. And then the gloves were still like kind of baggy on my hands, they didn't look good, so I just kind of like took them in a little bit to make them more snug, you know? And then I was a little bit concerned for my mental stability because I started watching Loki for the third time, guys, what is wrong? with me. So that just shows you my mental state. I'm not doing okay right now. And as I was doing that, I started putting in grommets on the sleeves of her cloak. Let me tell you, it is so terrifying to cut holes in something that you just finished sewing and looked really good and then you just feel like you're desecrating it. <laughs> but it all turned out okay because you just cut the holes and then you put in the little grommet things and then you hammer it because, you know, I'm still worthy. Haha, <laughs> Marvel jokes. <laughs> so I just put grommets like six inches apart 
down both sleeves. And then I moved on to the pants. I tried on a pair of pants that I just randomly had that were way too big for me. So this is me trying them on and pinning them so that I could take them in a little bit so they actually fit my body, you know? And I ended up taking them in about an inch and a half on each side. So I'm really janky in how I make my costumes, so I just kind of believe in like altering what you already have that could be made into a costume piece and then just like creating what you don't have. So there's no reason to make pants from scratch when I can just alter these ones, you know? And then I just tried on the pants again, which fit much better now, and I put on the boots just to make sure that like everything looked right and it seemed fine. Oh, and here is my my little Loki variant cat that was just being such a menace as I was trying to sew. He kept trying to eat everything and like push things off my desk and stepping on my computer, and, you know, the deal. And then of course I just had to put on all of the outfit pieces I had so far to show you the progress. Okay, here's what we got so far. So as you can see, the cape now has- can you see that? It has the little holes down the side. I don't even know what purpose those serve, but she has them so I put them there. And I'm gonna let you in a little secret. In the show she actually has like a little fastener right here so she can close this if she wants. And I don't have the right kind of fastener so I think I'm just gonna leave it off, but that stresses me out man because I'm such a perfectionist that I feel like every single detail has to be 100% right or else I'm just a total flop at life. Um, so that stresses me out. <laughs> I hate it. But for now, I'm gonna say the cloak is done, even without the little teeny fastener that nobody even barely sees in the show. Calm down, self. You're fine. And then, of course, we got the gloves. Fingerless gloves just make everything cooler. That's just a fact. And then I bought this mock turtleneck off Amazon because why make one from scratch when I can just buy one and alter it? You know, it's way easier that way, so sorry if that makes me a fake cosplayer. Whatever. And then my pants, which I have altered so that they actually fit my body now. Imagine that. And then the shoes, of course, got those. I will see you guys later when we start working on this shirt and the chest plate and that kind of stuff. Bye. Oh gosh, I didn't even look at what day of making my costume this is. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's day six, I don't know. Day six question mark of making my Sylvie costume. So I know it's been a hot second and that's because I've been doing some stuff off camera to try to figure my life out, you know? So just like I did with the cape, I'm trying to make like a prototype of the chest plate first, just so I don't use my good fabric and mess everything up and feel terrible and want to die. I have no pattern, as I've mentioned, so I just have to look at a picture and then figure out how to make it happen in the real world, and that can be difficult sometimes. So I haven't been filming that very much because it would literally just be a bunch of footage of my brain exploding. But don't worry, I'm going to show you the entire process of making the actual chest plate, but right now I'm just I'm giving you an update so you don't think that I died within the past week or however long it's been since I uploaded. So just brief rundown of what I've done so far. I uh, did a bunch of measurements of my own torso and then I wrote in my little notebook a bunch of confusing numbers and shapes and figures that make no sense to anyone except for my own brain. Then I drew some stuff onto the same exact fabric that I used for my prototype of my cape. It got reused because recycling. And then I just had to look at 10 million screenshots of Sylvie's chest plate thingy-majig and angles are hard dude oh my gosh it was so hard to figure out like how to just draw everything out and freaking intersecting all the oh my goodness but i did it i did it this is what it looked like and so once i had that all like sketched out with sharpie because you know that's how we do it i cut out all of those pieces and then i used those pieces put them on like wax paper gave it about like a fourth of an inch perimeter around them cut those out so those could be my fabric pieces because when you sew those together you're gonna need that fourth of an inch for a seam allowance. I'm making no sense. Why am I so hyperactive right now? Oh my freaking heck. Basically I used my prototype to make a pattern so that I could use that pattern for the actual chest plate and it'll look good. So today I whipped up a prototype. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think it looks really good. Uh, <laughs> it is very hard to see the actual details because this fabric has all kinds of detail. I mean what? You can see all the like squigglies on that fabric so it makes it hard to see the actual like crisscrossing of the... what? <laughs> I give up. This is gonna be her little gold piece right here. It's got all the like the crisscrossing. This is gonna be in the black fake leather. I apologize that it's so hard to see. It's not supposed to look good. It's supposed to prototype. I'm sorry. So today I just spent a lot of time making this fit my body properly and uh, look nice and I think it does look nice. Look at that. As you can see, does not have a back yet, but I do have the back pieces cut out. I just ran out of time to do things with them today. So yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna finish this and then I'm going to start cutting out the actual fabric and sewing that together. I found out I have a really long torso. That's a fun fact about me. <laughs> like my dress form does not extend to the same length of my body. I just have a long body. I'm a noodle. So thank you for watching this little short update. 
Bye. Hello and welcome to day seven of making my Sylvie costume and today is a very exciting day because I started working on the chest plate which is like you know the staple part of the costume so that's exciting. So I started by tracing all of the janky pattern pieces that I made out of wax paper and stuff onto my faux leather with a white colored pencil. This whole process took me about an hour because there are just so many pieces to cut out of oh my goodness it was a lot but I got that all done and then when I finished cutting out all the pieces of the black leather then I cut out the one piece of gold. So then I lined up all of the pieces I had cut out so you can kind of see what it's going to look like when it's all sewn together. So I started by cutting a bunch of slits where the gold and the black met each other on that little like circular part. Sewing on such an intense curve is already hard and it was even more scary because the gold fabric was like really prone to fray and then I couldn't even use pins because that would make the fabric fray and then it was poking holes in the leather. It was stressful. But I did get it done and it looked pretty decent. But I still had to sew one more curve so I just followed the same steps as I did before where I cut a bunch of slits in the gold and in the black and then lined them up but I sewed it together and it all looked okay oh and with that really difficult part out of the way then I could just move on to sewing the rest of the bodice together which was so much easier because it's just a bunch of straight lines <laughs> and Sylvie has two little gold beads on either side of her chest plate thingy but I didn't have beads that look like that so I just decided to use this random gold string that I just had so I cut a two inch piece and I sandwiched it in between the seam and then I just sewed those two pieces of leather together securing the string in place so that when I sew the top piece I can like lay the string along the seam it'll kind of look like her little bead thing even though it's not a bead and so I did the exact same thing with the next strip of leather that went on the left side as opposed to the right where I cut a two inch piece of gold string and I sandwiched it between those two pieces of leather and then I just sewed each leather strip that you can see there on the table I just sewed them on there one by one piecing it together like it was a puzzle and I didn't film all of it because you know it's kind of repetitive it's just a bunch of straight lines that I'm sewing just over and over but I took a picture with each piece each new piece that I added onto the costume so you can see the progress there and here's what it looked like but I wasn't quite done so I just had to sew some very minor darts on the inside of the bodice I just did it along where one of the seams already was so that it wasn't noticeable um, and the purpose of that obviously is just to like make the bodice more fitted to like you know a a woman's body if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and after I did that then I just pinned the top piece of faux leather to the rest of the bodice tucking in the little gold strings into the seams so that I could be like sewed down but for some reason I didn't show that in that clip but I promise that I did tuck those in. You'll see when it's all sewed together. So I just sewed all that together and that was the final step before the front of the bodice was basically done and I just gotta say I am really happy with how this came out. I'm excited man. Stick around for more updates as I keep making this costume heck yeah all right welcome to day eight of making my sylvie costume which technically is like four days mashed into one but you know time moves differently here in the tva haha <laughs> funny joke so i started by cutting out the back pieces of the chest plate thingy and that was like way less complicated than the front the front had like seven million pieces to cut out the back only had four so <laughs> that's good once i got that all cut out i just pinned and sewed together the top and the bottom pieces of both the left and the right side of the back but i didn't sew the back pieces together yet because i don't have a zipper yet we're getting there i don't know how to explain this but the next thing i did was like i traced the top and the bottom of like every piece of the bodice and I like cut out a piece that was the same shape but only like an inch long. This doesn't make any sense. I don't know how to explain this. Just anywhere where there isn't going to be a seam of like you know the side pieces coming together or something I put a little inch long piece of fabric so that I could sew it together and then when you like flip that little piece over to the inside and then sew it then like it looks nice from the outside. Does that make any sense? Oh my gosh I don't know how to explain this. But I didn't even sew it down yet so who cares <laughs> we're gonna move on I can't explain this and then I struggled to pin the front and the back pieces together in a way that actually like fit my body because for some reason the way that it fit on the dress form was just vastly different from how it fit my body even though the measurements were exactly the same so I really don't know what was going on there so I just sewed it where I thought would be correct and I left a little bit of room for adjustments but hopefully it's fine I really don't want to adjust it again okay moving on to the straps so this is me just cutting out a bunch of strips of black and green to make her like four little separate strap pieces that she has because she's got like two in the front and then she's got like a little buckle thing and then she's got two in the back so there's a lot of pieces going on here so I took the green pieces and I folded it over itself and then I like tacked that into place so that I could sandwich it easily between the two black pieces and then she has these little like gold pieces uh sporadically along her straps they look like they're metal but I don't have metal so I'm using little bits of ribbon so I just cut out a bunch of little pieces of ribbon and I sort of folded them in half and placed them 
sporadically along her straps. I tried to look at pictures of her and figure out what the pattern was for their placement. There really wasn't a pattern, so I did the best I could, but it's basically random. And then I folded the first piece of black over and I pinned it to the very edge of the green so that the green and the gold ribbon would still show just a little bit. So I sewed that into place and then I just repeated the process on the other side of the strap and then like I flipped over and did the whole thing on that other side as well. Basically, I just sewed a lot of seams so I could sandwich that green piece in between two black pieces. You get it. <laughs> but this is what the straps looked like when they were done. So I took them and sort of pinned them to the bodice that I had. This is roughly what they're gonna look like when they're in place, but also not really at all because they like weave in and out of her costume. There's like some things going on, but like this is a basic idea. So this is what it's gonna look like. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you stay tuned for more. Goodbye. Welcome to day nine of making my Sylvie costume. Today is a very small update, but it involves a mental breakdown, so I thought that would be fun. So today's goal was to make the little gold X on the front of Sylvie's costume. So I just kind of eyeballed it and I looked at a picture and I put some pins in the shape of the X where I thought it should be on her costume. And then I just ran it through my sewing machine following the outline I used with the pins. Literally all I did is I just filled it the rest in by hand, just, you know, embroidery. It took, it was very tedious. This is what it looked like after I had done all of that. And then what I wanted to do next was to try to install the zip so I could see if this thing actually fit my body correctly. But that's where we ran into the mental breakdown, so I will let you see that. Are you okay? No. It's been hours, but I can- I feel a little spark of life in my soul again after crying for so long. Why were you crying? Oh my gosh, because I hate myself. That's not good <laughs> or an answer. First I bought a zipper at Hobby Lobby. I didn't know how long I needed it to be because I didn't know how long the bodice would be. I found it, it was too short. I went to Walmart, I bought a zipper that was the correct length. But then I realized it was an invisible zipper and it doesn't come apart, apart at the bottom so I wouldn't be able to like take it apart and put it on my body and zip it up. It has to stay attached. So then I went back with that in mind. Okay, it has to come apart, it can't be an invisible zipper. And I freaking bought the wrong one again! <laughs> And it doesn't come apart. It's not an invisible zipper, but it still doesn't come apart! And I didn't look at it because I'm stupid! And I don't know how I'm that dumb. And now I don't know what to do because I can't drive and I can't go by myself and I can't walk there or I'll get murdered in the middle of the night. Would you like me to drive you to Walmart again today? I don't know. I feel so dumb. I... I... And my mental state has been on the brink for days, and this set me over the edge. I, I think you need some help. I do, but no one can help me. I'm a lost cause. <laughs> You're alone, and you always will be. Yes, that's why help. I was crying. My for ears hours. are shattered. That is why I was crying for hours. I don't have anyone in my life except for you. I meant you, not, not the phone. <laughs> I'm here. I haven't shaved in case. <laughs> I'm turning my pain into entertainment for others. I... Uh, this sounds healthy. <laughs> hey, I won my game. <laughs> I just lost the game. <laughs> oh, I just lost the game. <laughs> Mischief. Gotcha. You are not a god. I'm a goddess. What? I like this candle. You know what I like? Mm, the smell of my suffering? Mental stability. Ah! Okay, welcome to day 10 of making my Sylvie costume. Today I started working on the metal beads that are on the right side of her costume. I mean, right side when you're wearing it, not when you're looking at it. <laughs> so I had this belt with beads that were about the right size and shape, but they were silver instead of gold, so I had to paint them. First I filed them down so that the paint would stick better because the beads were like metal and slick and the paint would just peel right off. I don't think it actually made a difference, but I tried. And then with just some regular paint I had, I just started painting them gold and I had to do several coats because as you can see it was not very opaque the first time. Also I could not get the song Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish out of my head because that has just been playing over and over in my brain since the day it came out so that's fun. I don't relate to you no cause I never treat me this Bro, what is happening? <laughs> and then once all 12 beads were painted, I took them outside and I sprayed them with this like uh, sealant 
stuff that I bought at Walmart that's supposed to make the paint like not peel or something. And I let it dry for like 24 hours and it works fairly well. Like I feel like it would still peel if I like hit it against something aggressively, but I'm not planning on doing that. So hopefully it's gonna be okay. Anyway, next thing. So then I cut out some little slits where these straps needed to weave in and out of her costume. And of course it is terrifying to cut slits in something that you spent hours working on and perfecting, but you know, you gotta do it. I just powered through it. I just cut those little slits and then I did a bit of hand sewing off camera. And then this is what it looked like with the straps loosely in place where they're supposed to be. And then I sewed down the straps so that they would stay in place and I tried to make the seams as unnoticeable as possible which was a little bit terrifying but I did it. And then this is what the beads looked like after I hand sewed every single one to that costume. <laughs> and then my zipper finally came so no more mental breakdowns for now at least. So I just lined up each side of the zipper with the inside back panels of the costume and just sewed that in place. Pretty simple zipper installation techniques. <laughs> and then it was the long-awaited moment of truth to see if this actually fit me or if I severely miscalculated. This shirt is so ugly, I know, but it's really soft. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is very difficult because the straps aren't assembled yet. <laughs> assembled. <laughs> I'm sorry, that wasn't funny. <laughs> it's okay, I can do this. Come on. Hold on. Ah! Okay, it's zipped up. <laughs> this looks so st um, pretend I'm not wearing this right now. It's, it just, just ignore that, okay? Like, Hold on. Oh, I did the hair flip. <laughs> okay, so just pretend that like these straps, hold on. There we go. Hey, okay. Oh my gosh, okay. So this is what it's gonna look like when the straps are actually done. They're not, but look. Guys, this is so exciting. <laughs> Everything just always feels so much more real when it's actually on my body. Oh, who's trying to come in? Loki. Double variant. Say hi to the people. Oh, such a sweet boy. Front, side, other side, back. I gotta go, but thank you for watching. Ah, I'm so excited. Welcome to day 11 of making my Sylvie costume. And today we are finishing the chest plate. So the first thing I did was I cut out the same basic shape as the chest plate in the same black fabric that I used for the cape. And this was so that I could make a lining just to make it look nicer. And using that one inch long strip of fabric that I sewed to all the raw edges of the chest plate, like, a million videos ago. I flipped it over top of the lining and pinned it in place, creating clean edges all around. And then I just put that through the sewing machine and top stitched the whole thing. And this is what it looked like when the bottom was done. And then I just did the exact same thing to the top, tucking the lining under the strip of faux leather and pinning all of that in place. Then I had to sew everything down, which was just a scary process. There's a lot of twists and turns and curves in this thing, especially since I'm paranoid that this faux leather is gonna like start peeling someday and I need to like figure out how to preserve it. I'm a little scared. I didn't really think that through before I started working with this fabric, uh, help. But it was all okay, I got that finished. And then I moved on to the final step, which was the straps. So I had this random luggage strap thing with two bronze hooks on them. So I put the hooks in a vise and I just took a freaking saw and I just <laughs> sawed them off so I could use the little buckle thing that they were attached to. So then I just took the front and the back straps and I laced them through the buckle and pinned them in place, creating the illusion that this is adjustable even though it's really not, but you know. <laughs> and then once I sewed all of that down, I just had to do a bit of hand sewing and tying off loose ends before the chest plate was completely done. And now it's time for the grand reveal. Okay, this is the final product. Whoa, okay, this is cool. <laughs> you ever just look at something you made and you're like, how? I, I, mm. it feels like an ultimate reality that this happened and I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> this was definitely the hardest part of the whole costume. So we're, we're like over the hill now. It's going to be smooth sailing. I don't want to jinx it. It's probably going to be smooth sailing from here on out. I don't even know what to show you guys. I feel like I've already showed you everything, but, um, here's the back. So it's like a little bit snug. <laughs> I was telling my dad, it's almost comforting because it almost feels like I'm getting a hug. <laughs> That's so depressing. I gotta go. <laughs> I need help. So now I finished this, the cape, the pants, I have boots. Now I just have to do the shirt she wears under this and her like belt things where she keeps all her pokey objects and the horns. And I think that might be it. So this is done and thank you for watching this far and I hope you continue to watch for the rest of the costume because we're almost done. 
I'm excited. Woo! Okay, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Welcome to day 12 of making my Sylvie costume, and today we are working on the shirt that she wears under her chest plate. So I started by just cutting off the sleeves of the black turtleneck that I bought off Amazon because her sleeves are like leathery, so I gotta switch that out. Then I just picked the seam of the severed sleeve open so that I could lay it flat on top of my faux leather and use it as a guide to cut out that same shape but in leather. And I cut a couple inches past the wrist just to be safe so I had more fabric to work with in case it was too short because that would be terrible. And once I had the sleeves cut out, it was time to replicate the weird circle pattern on her sleeves. I stole some washers from my dad and then I cut a couple rings off of an old purse that I had and I lined them up in order of their size on the sleeve. And I loosely stitched them into place on the wrong side of the faux leather so that they wouldn't move around when I was sewing them down. Then I took a piece of thin black fabric and I laid it on top of the washers. And then I hand sewed every single one of them in place, doing a line of stitches around the outside and the inside to make that circular shape show through on the right side of the fabric. And then I gave the end of the sleeves a little bit of shape so that it would end at my wrist but then kind of swoop down over the back of my hand a little bit. And then I did the same thing that I did for the chest plate where I cut out a thin strip of fabric in the same shape of the raw edge and then I laid it on top right sides together. I just ran that through the sewing machine and then I flipped that inside out so that it was uh, wrong sides together. And then I ran it through the machine again to finish off the edge and make it look really neat. And this is what it looked like when it was done. Then I just pinned the sleeve right sides together so that I could sew up the seam on the inside of the arm that would actually make it like sleeve shaped again, you know? And then after that I just turned it inside out to see how it looked and then I pinned it back onto the turtleneck where I had originally chopped the sleeves off. And once I had sewed both sleeves in place then I just pinned it a gold ribbon along the faux leather right where it met the turtleneck fabric and I sewed that into place. <laughs> Whew, and that took a while but then after all that work the sleeves were done and here's what they looked like. I apologize if the lighting is like really bad. Um, My bedroom just does not have good lighting. I'm sorry, I tried. These sleeves were a little rough because faux leather is not the best fabric to work with for sleeves but I think it's okay. I can move decently well. I'll be okay. <laughs> and I think they look pretty good too. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So thank you for watching and come back next time where we will do the collar and the little shoulder pads. That's fun. Okay, welcome to day 13 of making my Sylvie costume, and today we are focusing on the collar and the shoulder pads. I started by measuring and cutting out the basic shape for the shoulder pads that I wanted, and I cut out four little triangle thingies, one for the top and the bottom of both the shoulder pads. Then I took some batting and I cut out the same basic shape of the shoulder pads, but only two of them this time. And then I pinned the leather pieces right sides together, and I sewed them all the way around, leaving an opening at the top. And then I turned them inside out and I stuffed those triangles of batting into them, and this is so that when I sew the crisscross pattern on top of the shoulder pads it'll show up better and it won't just get lost in the fabric it'll have some texture in there and then I just top stitched a seam about a little less than a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the shoulder pads to help them lay flat and then I actually forgot to film sewing the crisscross pattern until I was like halfway done but to be honest I didn't even have a plan anyway I just completely winged it but somehow it worked out well I just sewed a whole bunch of parallel lines that overlapped each other and this is what it turned out looking like which I feel like it's pretty good for not having planned at all <laughs> then I moved on to the collar I started by separating the original collar from the rest of the turtleneck so that I could open it up and use it as a pattern piece to cut out the same shape in the faux leather, just like I did with the sleeves. Then I folded the faux leather piece over and I pinned a gold ribbon to it right at the top and I sewed that in place. And for some reason, my thread broke like 500 times when I was trying to do this. I don't know why, the gold thread was really stretchy, so maybe that's why, but I just was not having good luck this day. <laughs> then I pinned the shoulder pads in place approximately where they should go and I sewed them down. And at this point, I was getting progressively worse at filming the process because the end was in sight and I was getting kind of antsy so bear with me as this gets worse. <laughs> then I pinned the collar back on to where I had cut the original off and I sewed that in place going right over where I had so sewed the shoulder pads as well. And then remember how I bought a million zippers that were all the wrong kind because I'm an idiot? Well it turns out that came in handy because I decided to put an invisible zipper on the back so I just cut a big old slit down the entire back of the shirt. And as I mentioned I did a really bad job of filming this but this is me pinning the zipper to the edge of the slit that I just cut and then I sewed both sides of the zipper in place although I kind of only filmed one side of it but it's okay and then I just closed up the rest of the seam at the bottom because the zipper I used only went about halfway down the shirt and with that the shirt was done so it is time for the grand reveal the collar and the shoulder pads they're kind of acting weird right now but they won't because the strap will be over this holding it down so ignore that here's the back see with the uh with the straps on it'll hold the shoulder pads down and they will look normal I just have to do her like belts where she keeps keeps her knives and I have to do her horns and I'm pretty sure that's all. So I'm getting giggly now. Uh oh. <laughs> Wee. <gasps> I've never done that before. I see why they do it now. I gotta do it for real. 
<laughs> what is this turning into? This isn't even a character that does that. What am I doing? I don't know. I feel like I did such a bad job of filming like a reveal for this, but the lighting's terrible. I don't know what to do. I'm sorry. The costume's almost done. Thank you so much for watching. So, uh, gotta go. Hello and welcome to day 14, the final day of making my Sylvie costume. Ooh, that's crazy. So since I'm a hoarder and I just have a whole bunch of crap to use for sewing, I just tried on a bunch of belts that I had to figure out which ones looked the closest to hers. And once I had settled on two that looked pretty good, then I had to set to work on altering them. Her belts do not have visible buckles that I can tell, so I had to remove this one. I broke out the hacksaw again. I couldn't really film it one-handed though, but I just sawed that thing off and then I just pulled out the buckle <laughs> and then I switched to the second belt and I just picked out all the stitches keeping the buckle attached so I could just get that out of the way and then since there was no buckle anymore I just laid the belt on top of itself and I sewed it in place and I'm gonna tell you a secret one side of the belt is actually brown but nobody needs to know that because I have it flipped to the black side hee <laughs> hee and then I just cut off the excess bit of belt that I didn't need anymore and then where the two belts met at my right hip I slightly overlapped them and sewed them into place so that they can just act as one costume piece instead of two and then I just added a hook and eye closure to the first belt so that I could get it on and off easily. And that was all pretty simple, it really didn't take that long, and with that I was done, and this is just me trying it on to make sure everything fit. And I also tried to make her horns out of clay, but it just, it was not working, man, so I just impulsively ordered some off of Etsy, which is fine, because I don't claim to be a metal worker or a prop maker, I'm just a seamstress, so if I need to buy some things that aren't made of fabric, that's okay with me, I have my one talent, that's okay. So that'll come in a little bit, but anyway, here's the final reveal, just without the horns. I have not tried on all of these costume pieces at once yet. I'm excited. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Should I? <laughs> oh gosh, I'm too short. I'm too short. <sighs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, pants and shirt got that because without that, that would be a little inappropriate. Where'd my shoes go? So this is the finished look as you can tell. Whoa. The disconnect between my face right now and the costume is astronomical because <laughs> I'm giggly. <laughs> so you guys have already seen most of this and you've been keeping up with my sewing TikToks. You just haven't seen it all together, so yeah, my dudes. Oh, this is so fun. I don't have the blonde, but sorry. I also don't have my horns, but those should come in like a week or two, so that's okay. I've already got some TikTok ideas and some YouTube video ideas for this costume that hopefully I can do. See if I can rope my brother into helping me. <laughs> oh, and if you guys have any ideas, nobody's gonna watch this, but if anyone sees this and has any ideas, you should tell me because I need more ideas and also more ideas for more costumes to make because this is what I'm good at and I need to make more. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you like my costume as much as I do because I'm very passionate about these things. So I guess with that, I will say goodbye. <laughs> Reference, did you get it? I'm, I hate myself, I'm sorry. <laughs>